Lord and the revelation that you're going to receive from this program today. So I encourage you to stay tuned because, and also to really prepare your heart for what he has for you. Stay tuned. Welcome to Miracles Happen. Joan Hunter has been traveling the world in the healing ministry for more than 45 years. Be aware of what the enemy is trying to do to you and say, no more. She is hosted around the world for healing and miracle services because wherever she goes, miracles happen. Joan shares her tenacious faith in how to pray for the sick. Bringing people here and sending them out to the four corners of the earth. That's my job. She traveled the world with her parents, Charles and Francis Hunter, for over 30 years. I expect a miracle tonight. Joan sees healing, signs, and wonders happen all the time in the name of Jesus, and she wants to share this with you. As anointed as I am, so are you. Whether it's filmed on location at Joan Hunter Ministries in Tomball, Texas, or from around the world, you can be sure to hear good news and receive the resounding message that miracles happen. God has anointed in the area of healing, body, mind, soul, spirit, and finances. So stay tuned and join us for this week's extraordinary episode of Miracles Happen. God is a God of hope who heals the body, spirit, and soul. Are you ready for your miracle? Miracles Happen. We are in Williamstown, Kentucky, the home of the Ark. You can see the Ark behind me. I'm so excited. I'm going into the Ark for the very first time with you today, and I want to encourage you. So guess what? Let's go. side of the ark. This is a question I've kind of asked, what did they do with all like all the chickens, all the birds, all the different animals that they just let them run throughout the ark? But it's kind of interesting because they now have all of these little individual things that kept like the birds together, the pigs together, the, you know, whatever together. And it's just, it's really an enlightening experience being in here. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am. As I walk through this, and I have seen this, this sheet right here, this wall, and all of these people here have contributed to make his dream a reality. And there are many names that are not listed on here because it is a continual situation of people donating and donating and donating to keep this up and going. Yes, they charge for tickets, but you know what? There's a whole lot more for this, and it just keeps going and going. And I just want to say thank you for partnering with Joan Hunter Ministries and Joan Hunter Ministries Canada through MiraclesHappen.tv. And we're going to see incredible supernatural things happen. Today has been a day of expanding my dreams and my visions, not on my age, based on what God's telling me to do. And this is encouraging me. I'm like, God, send more partners to this ministry. Send more people to help us do and to fulfill the call of God on my life and Joan Hunter Ministries. God showed me as I was here that this huge door of opportunity 
And I know that there's really big doors opening up for Joan Hunter Ministries, Joan Hunter, etc. And God said, He'll, that you can open no door that He doesn't open for you. But understand that this is a year that God's going to open up doors and they're going to be big, big doors of opportunity. I want to encourage you to get ready for all that God has for you. Hello. Today we are at the Ark Encounter in Williamstown, uh, Kentucky. And I want to share with you a few things that uh, you may have uh, not thought about in connection to you as a Christian and the whole... Uh, creation, all of creation, and the Ark Encounter uh, was actually built by the same people who uh, built the Creation Museum. I, I highly recommend that you uh, investigate it, check it out, and visit it when you're in the area. But I want to say about creation that uh, creation was a supernatural event, and all the attempts of men to understand it, to define it, uh, to rationalize it will pro are going to fail apart from a, the supernatural work of God. Scripture says uh, that God spoke it into existence, that, and it also says that everything that was made, He made it. Uh, so there's no way that a, a simple, any uh, textbook written at any level of intellectual sophistication will be sufficient to understand creation. That's why God gave us the scriptures. And those who think that it's a simple matter to harmonize uh, the modern th uh, doctrine, I would call it an ideology of creation, of uh, evolution, with the biblical account of creation, those are all doomed to fail. It can't be done. You see, there isn't a natural way to explain supernatural events. And the creation was a supernatural event. That we often hear this uh, question, which came first, the chicken or the egg? And the idea is that you can't possibly know which came first because they both had to exist. But actually, we can know which came first because God made both Adam and Eve fully adults. When they woke up, they both spoke. They had rational intellect. They had a human consciousness and a human spirit at the very beginning. So all the animals, including chickens, were created adults and then had eggs or birth offspring later. So you can know that, but you see the problem for non-Christians is they don't accept the biblical account. If you start out from a point that's saying there is no God, then you're also gonna reject the scriptures. And so it makes it impossible for you to arrive at any conclusion other than things just evolved. This is a lie. According to scripture, when men reject the truth, they will believe a lie. That's scripture. Um, you see, if you, if you, but if you reject creation, you're also going to reject the incarnation and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If you can't believe that there is a God who made heaven and earth, then why would you possibly believe that God could become a man, live on this earth, die on the cross for your sins, and so that you could have fellowship with him forever? Why would you? The creation event is supernatural. It doesn't fit into any scientific scheme. The attempts, some Christians have well-meaning attempts to put uh, the creation uh, account of the Bible into a, a scientific scheme, those aren't going to work very well either. God's intentions in the scriptures are to tell us what we need to know. He doesn't try, he didn't even try to tell us everything we want to know. He tells us the things we need to know to live and walk with him in holiness and by faith. If you're looking for a uh, critical scientific approach to creationism and Darwinism, evolution, I suggest you read Darwin's Black Box, The Biochemical Challenge to Evolution by Dr. Michael J. Behe, professor of biochemistry at Lehigh University. But for our purposes, I just want you to know that if you choose to trust to believe there is a God, you must learn to rely on the biblical account of creation and all of scriptures. You can't pick and choose certain parts of the Bible that you want to accept as true and that you embrace and that you find value in. You won't be able to do that. You have to choose it all, including the creation account. 
because in creation, we learn that Adam and Eve were faced with a choice, the choice that all men have to make, rely on the Word of God to live by faith on the tree of life or to choose the one thing they weren't supposed to do, rely on their own, own understanding, which comes from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So he, every human being has the same choice that Adam and Eve had. They chose the tree of knowledge over the tree of life. They rejected the will of God. They chose the one thing God told them they couldn't have. And as a result, they fell into sin and ultimately died. You see, once you learn to accept the biblical account, you will begin to see the fingerprints of God in all things. You will see it in the plants, the animals, uh, the trees. You'll find the prints of God in the stars in the sky, the galaxies, the moon and the sun. Everything has his fingerprints in it. But if you start from a point where you deny God's existence and you reject the scriptures as the authoritative voice in your life, then you will make yourself an object of lies and deception, you will easily become deceived or you will try to find a way to harmonize an atheistic, non-Christian view of the origins of the universe, evolution, with God's actual work, a supernatural work that the Bible calls creation. So we're faced over and over again uh, every day we have to make a decision whether we're going to rely on our own intellect and the wisdom of men or we're going to choose to be guided by the scriptures, led by the Holy Spirit to a place, the tree of life, so we continually live in righteousness, peace, and joy. You can choose righteousness, peace, and joy, or you can choose to rely on your own strength and your own wisdom for the few number of years you have on this world, and then you will spend eternity apart from God. So right now, I wanna lead you in a prayer, and we're gonna pray a short prayer. Repeat after me, Father, I repent for the times I've chosen to rely on my own wisdom and on the wisdom of men of this age and be led by the spirit of this age rather than the spirit of God and by the word of God contained in the Holy Scriptures. I repent of those things and I choose to rely on you. I choose this day to walk with you the way Enoch walked with you. And as all the great believers of all time have done, until that day when we are brought home and see you face to face, amen. Joan Hunter Ministries travels around the world sharing the healing power of God. Joan Hunter Ministries is touching lives all over the world through live streaming events, books and teachings, and our prayer call center where miracles happen daily. All of this is made possible by your prayers and support. When you partner with Joan Hunter Ministries, you not only bless those who receive the message, but you open a supernatural flow of blessing into your own life. Today is a day that my God's gonna supply all of my needs according to His riches and glory. Today is is the day that God's going to point to me as an example of His incredible wealth. To become a monthly partner with Joan Hunter Ministries, call 1-281-789-7500 or go to joanhunter.org. Today is a day of alignment. Today is a day for financial breakthrough. Today is a day for your healing. Today is the day I don't have to wait any longer for the promises. Go to joanhunter.org to give a one-time gift or text any amount you'd like to give to 281 771-1507. Become a partner with Joan Hunter Ministries today. Hi, I just have a new acquaintance and hopefully somewhere down the road a friend because I am not going to just come here one time. And uh, this is Bodie Hodge, and he has the awesome privilege of being a part of the family uh, because his daughter, uh, her, her dad is the one who designed all this. And, uh, and, and I should say didn't necessarily design it all, but he's the one who God gave the vision to. Just like years ago, God gave, many years ago, God gave the vision to Noah. And Noah listened and built. And I, I absolutely love this location. And uh, with this oh, yeah, in the background, right. I would have a hard time working here. I would probably turn my desk and face it that way or make it, you know, you can, you know, buy sideable. I don't know if that's a word or not, but it is now. Maybe we can come up with it, right? Yes, we can. <laughs> so just so in case you have any questions, this is not a mural. This is not a backdrop. That is actually the arc behind us. That's because right. Because it's so incredible. It actually looks like a mural back there. Yeah. And, and I, what is interesting, what he, Buddy was talking about, and his education, who would have ever thought he would have been 
able to use his education in full-time ministry. But understand that what goes on in the education that we get, like I was raised in a printing company, okay? And I use, I have a lot of knowledge in the area of a printing company, even though I left there uh, when I was like 16. And when we moved to Texas in full-time ministry after that. But the thing is, is here we have all this stuff going on. I need to know about printing and so forth and so on. I need to know about this and posters, mailing, shipping. I know all that kind of stuff. And trust me, I have used it in ministry, not just doing what I do. And it's like I'm, you know, finalizing a book. So I'm doing this and doing that, talking to the printer today, talking to the, the person that's going to put it together. Um, you know, I have to know all these things. And so even my background has helped me even in the ministry today, which I think is really awesome. And people go, I'll be able, never able to use my education. And you might be surprised how, hello, how surprise, here you are. That's for sure. Yeah. And how big, how I don't know if you know this or not, but how many square feet is in the ark? Uh, as for square footage, I don't know, but overall you got cubics. dimensions. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's yeah, all cubics. That's right. In the Bible, it gives uh, cubits, uh, 300 by 50 by 30. And in the Bible, there's actually two cubits. You had a shorter cubit, which was called a common cubit, and you had an older cubit or a longer cubit. The shorter cubit was typically about fingertip to elbow, and so that was about 18 inches for your shorter cubit. Your longer cubit was about a cubit and a handbreadth, and so that was about 20 to 21 inches. So when it came down to us building the ark, it's like, well, which one do you pick? And so you know, we have different ones attested to. We decided to go with the older cubit because it doesn't get much older than Noah. So we used the longer cubit, which makes the ark somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, about 510 feet long by 85 by 51. And that's just overall general right, dimensions. Three, right, at least. You're right. And so you have the three mm -hmm. decks based on that. Now, usually the way they do the measurements is at your draft level where the water would sit on the outside. So that's where they do that. But yeah, it's, a, it's an immense structure. And you, you've had the opportunity to walk through it. Is that right? I have. I just... And I'm like, I just wanted to stay longer, you know, because it was such um, it was such a neat experience, you know, right. and, and I never thought about that. They had their own garden. Correct. They had their own garden. Yeah. And then uh, then they had the moss, a place for the moss to grow mm -hmm. to feed the reptiles. I'm like. Right. You know, the things you have to think through, you know, like, uh, you know, for example, at the Ark Encounter, you go in the first level and it gives you an idea of, you know, using standardized cage designs to fit different type of animals, areas to hold like amphibious creatures to hold some of the, the water in and that sort of thing. Uh, but then you also had to take the food on board for them. And then at the same time, there's going to be living quarters. There's going to be uh, a, a number of things that sometimes yeah, we're we don't showing, think of. Like, living rooms of. and bedrooms. Right. And That's right. And, and it's fascinating. We're going to have a kitchen in there, probably an area to do some woodworking, uh, maybe even some metalworking and that sort of thing, because uh, they worked with iron and bronze and things like that before the flood. So those things existed. Mm -hmm. Now, the ark was made out of wood, but they probably utilized a lot of uh, tools and things like that that were made of iron. So they might have had to repair things while they were on the ark as well. Yeah, and it was, it was so neat. And then... Um, as Zach pointed out, which I mentioned earlier, um, that they brought seed to plant when they got on dry land again. That's right. See, we have to remember, you know, Noah, Noah wasn't, he wasn't an idiot, if I can put it that way. Right. Uh, yeah, Shoddy was he, fairly intelligent. Right. Mm -hmm. right. You know, he'd, he'd been alive for 500 years. Uh, then he started to have children at the age of 600. That's when the flood actually began. I mean, imagine how much knowledge he could have at, at, at age 600. Imagine, imagine what... <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to have kids when I'm 600. <laughs> Thank no. you. But, uh, you know, just consider, he's thinking about the fact of they're going to come off the ark. What's the world going to be like? You're going to have mm -hmm. to have seeds. You're probably going to have certain tools. They probably thought through a lot of those things. And, and sometimes when we just read the, the account of Noah's day uh, there in Genesis 6, 7, and 8, we don't realize all the stuff that he probably had right. to go through and think about. Right, and it's short, sweet, to the point. Boom. Mm -hmm. But... But walking through, you mm -hmm. see so much that, you know, they had the gardens, they had the seed to plant when they got mm -hmm. there, you know, they had this, they had that. And I mean, even little moth holders to, to, to yeah. feed the reptiles and, you know, and enough food to last mm -hmm. them. They didn't know how long they were going to be on mm -hmm. there, but they had enough food to last for right. as long as they needed it. Right. And, you know, there's even the consideration they may have had to take fresh water on there. I know with a lot of calculations, people put fresh water on. Now, they could have harvested water at least that first right. 150 days or so. But, of course, Your they strike the, the mountains sky. there. Well, by, right. at that point, of course, it hadn't yeah. rained, you know, ever. So. You know, and then when it started raining, that that water was a whole lot purer than what we have now. Yeah, I mean, we got the springs of the great deep bursting forth and all that. By the 150th day, though, the ark strikes the mountains of Ararat. And so they're kind of stuck there until... 
uh, over a year before Noah actually gets called off the ark. So, you know, could they harvest water at that point? That's why sometimes they may have had some reserves and things like that. So there's a lot of stuff really to think about. And it was brilliant working with our engineers and our researchers going through this, not just how did we fit the animals? How did they they feed them in water? You know, think of automatic feeding and watering systems. I mean, you and I, we wouldn't want to be out there feeding animals every single day, all the time, and watering them and cleaning their waste. They probably set up certain systems the way a lot of farmers do nowadays mm -hmm. to automatically feed and automatically water a lot of these things. That's so neat to think through. I just thought it was just amazing. What do you feel or how do you feel in regards to... Um, what is presented here at the ark as you walk through the mm -hmm. different videos and so forth. Um, how it literally, I, I mean, I'm just like, <laughs> oh, in awe here, but, uh, but it really opens it up for greater ex, um, expectation yes. of miracles in our own lives. Yeah, you know, sometimes people miss out. They, you know, they, they look back at Noah and they think, wow, this thing really happened. And, you know, we're in a culture that sometimes attacks the reality of Noah's Ark. They, it attacks the reality mm -hmm. of the flood of Noah's Day. In fact, I was drilled with that, you know, as a kid being taught that. So looking back, seeing what Noah actually had to go through, not just to build it, but imagine the persecution he probably oh, went through beforehand. You're crazy. Uh, yeah. And, you know, but then and I... are banging on the door going, <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean what I said. But, Let me in. I changed my mind. <laughs> yeah, but just to see a structure like that made out of wood survive a global flood, is, mm -hmm. it's just fascinating. It, it almost blows your mind uh, thinking about all that stuff. So I actually like to look at that as, wow, this is an incredible preservation. But here's one thing that I really love about it. There was only one way to be saved from that flood, only one. You had to go through the door of that ark. Now, that in one sense is like a type of Christ. There's only one way to be saved for all eternity, and that is through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ actually describes himself as the door by which you walk through to be saved. And so you can see those parallels from the days of Noah uh, to all eternity today with Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things we talk about here at the Ministry of Answers in Genesis, we love to go back to Genesis. And, uh, you know, I, I love to point out that God, our perfect God, made a perfect world. It really was perfect. No death, no bloodshed, no suffering, no cancer, no baldness. I mean, it really was perfect. Um, but see, when Adam and Eve sinned against God, everything changed. God cursed the ground. He cursed the animals. He sentenced man to die. The world went from a perfect world to an imperfect and broken world. And that's the world we're living in. And that's why we need a Savior in Jesus Christ to save us from sin and death. That's why we need a new heavens and a new earth, because this one's cursed and broken. And when we think about what Jesus himself did, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, stepping into history to die in our place, the infinite Son of God right there on the cross, the infinite Son... He took the infinite punishment from the infinite Father. Mm -hmm. And that was enough to satisfy God's wrath upon sin. That's why we don't have to sacrifice animals today. Sacrifice was from the Garden of Eden forward. Noah offered sacrifices. Abraham did, the Israelites did. And that's all pointing to Jesus Christ, the mm -hmm. ultimate and final sacrifice. And it's through his blood, through his death, burial, and resurrection that we can be saved. All right. Well, uh, you know, I just wanted to uh, give a shout out to your audience. You know, I'm sure you got a lot of people following from all over the world. I know you've been all over the world as well. And, uh, you know, I've been to a number of places around the world. And I know my father-in-law, Ken Ham, has. And our ministry, we even have a worldwide ministry. We have an office in the UK and Canada and uh, down in Australia and down in Peru and Mexico. We, you know, we really like to reach out. I love to see worldwide ministries connect. And uh, I would love to encourage people to go to our website, AnswersInGenesis.org. And uh, on there, you can find the Ark Encounter, or you can go straight to ArkEncounter.com or the CreationMuseum.org and find out more about our ministries and a lot of the stuff that we do. We even have our own streaming service, Answers.tv. If you're fed up with some of the secular programming that's out there, sometimes it's good uh, to be able to hop on that. And, uh, you know, I want to encourage people to come back to your show and, and follow you. And uh, I just want to want to encourage everyone, hey, come to the Ark Encounter if you get that chance. It really is a blessing. God I, bless you all. I totally agree. Do whatever <laughs> you can do to come here and really experience what we have experienced today. Well, I don't know about you, but looking at the Ark behind me, and I walked up here, walked outside, and I'm like, wow, 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 wow. And it's so absolutely majestic. It's amazing how God took him from didn't know any, any any information, didn't have YouTube to figure out how to build the ark, different things like that, and he built this amazing ark. And I just wanna share with you what I, I, I personally believe is a spiritual connotation of the ark. There was sin going on in the world at pre-ark, and God says, I'm done with the sin. I am done with sin. And so, 
What happened is he built the ark and eight people survived the flood. That's it, to start life over again. And what's happening right now is that there's a lot of sin in the earth. You know, no matter if you, you know, refer to politics or different things like that, or just sin in the church. And God is tired of sin in the church. The Word of God says he'll have no other gods before me. There's a lot of things in this world, including money, that has come before him. And it's so important that we get our priorities back into alignment, repent of our sins. Now, the Word of God says in Romans 8, 28, for all things work together for his good, for them that love the Lord. And understand that no matter what happens in this world, God's gonna, Genesis 50 verse 20, he'll take it, what was meant to kill you, what was evil, turn around and make a miracle out of it. And I believe that if we are going to go through any of these really, really hard times, that God is gonna surround us as born again, spirit-filled Christians He's gonna surround us with an ark of protection. But I just wanna tell you, now is the time to really, really go after your relationship with God and with Jesus. Not just know the Bible, but know who wrote the Bible and get to know him personally. And I wanna encourage you to call the ministry. We would love to pray with you. That's 281-789-7500. Again, 281 281- 789-7500. But I just wanna take a moment because if, if the world can convince you that the ark wasn't real, then he can also convince you that there's no heaven or hell. But let me tell you, all three are true. I wanna lead you in a prayer, whether of salvation or rededication, and just say, Father, I wanna know you more. I have sinned and I repent for my sin. Take the sin from me, put it on the cross, never to be held against me again. Jesus, I want you into my, in my life, not only as my Savior, but my Lord. I wanna know you more. Father, through your Holy Spirit, allow him to even show me more about you. Father, give me revelation as I read your word. Make your word personal to me. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name, amen. I hope you have enjoyed watching today's program as much as I have enjoyed making this program for you. I wanna thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next week for another episode of Miracles Happen. Miracles Happen. Thanks for watching Miracles Happen. Contact us at miraclesappen.tv or give us a call at 1-281-789-7500 or connect with Joan on Facebook at facebook.com slash Joan Hunter. And make sure to join us next week for Miracles Happen. God is a God of hope who heals the body, spirit, and soul.